Pathways. So drugs acting on different compensatory pathways when combined together produce a greater therapeutic benefit, better patient outcomes. When an antihypertensive agent is used alone as monotherapy, there is a fall in blood pressure. Subsequent to fall in blood pressure, there is activation of various compensatory pathways such as the sympathetic nervous system, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system that keeps up the blood pressure and decreases the effect of the antihypertensive agent when used alone. So, but when combined with the second antihypertensive agent acting on different compensatory pathways, this causes dampening of the effect of the compensatory pathways, causing further lowering of the blood pressure. The blood pressure lowering effect gets enhanced and this produces a greater therapeutic benefit, causes a greater antihypertensive effect. Therefore, drugs should be used in combination acting on different compensatory pathways. This principle could be understood with the help of an example that is shown here. Calcium channel blocker is a vasodilator. By decreasing the peripheral vascular resistance, it causes a fall in blood pressure. This fall in blood pressure decreases the perfusion to the kidney causing increased secretion of renin. An increased renin secretion causes increased formation of angiotensin 2 and aldosterone formation. As we know that angiotensin 2 is a vasoconstrictor and aldosterone increases the reabsorption of sodium and water, increasing the extracellular fluid volume, thus increasing the blood pressure. So this compensatory pathway tends to increase the blood pressure, thus decreasing the effect of calcium channel blocker. Therefore, by combining with an ACE inhibitor or angiotensin receptor blocker that inhibits the compensatory pathway that inhibits the renin angiotensin aldosterone axis, dampens the effect of the compensatory pathway, decreases the effect of the compensatory pathway, thus increasing the effect of calcium channel blocker, causing further lowering of blood pressure. So combining the calcium channel blocker with an AC inhibitor or ARB enhances the antihypertensive effect by acting on different compensatory pathways, acting through different mechanisms and therefore this should be kept in mind when combining antihypertensive drugs in the management of hypertension. The second example is a combination of beta blocker with thiazide diuretic. Thiazide diuretic causes a fall in blood pressure and this stimulates the sympathetic outflow and causes activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system and this tends to raise the blood pressure. Therefore, by combining with the beta blocker that inhibits the sympathetic system, it's the sympathetic inhibitor, so it controls the compensatory pathway, it inhibits the sympathetic system and thus adds on to the antihypertensive effect that is caused by a thiazide diuretic. Thus, a combination of thiazide diuretic and a beta blocker which acts on different compensatory pathways through different mechanisms is useful in the management of hypertension. The second benefit of combination therapy with antihypertensive agents is antihypertensive agents when combined together reduce the side effects improving the safety profile of the antihypertensive regimen. For example, drugs such as hydralazine and calcium channel blocker are vasodilators and by decreasing the peripheral vascular resistance causes a fall in blood pressure. The fall in blood pressure induces sympathetic activation, increases the sympathetic outflow and this causes unwanted tachycardia. So tachycardia appears as a side effect. Also sympathetic activity stimulates the secretion of 
of renin which causes the increased formation of angiotensin 2 and aldosterone secretion and as we know that aldosterone increases the reabsorption of sodium and water it causes fluid retention volume overload and this volume overload can cause tolerance and decrease effect of these drugs when used in long term so by combining hydralazine and calcium channel blocker with a beta blocker which helps to counteract unwanted tachycardia so tachycardia can be reduced by combining these drugs with a beta blocker and secondly the fluid retention can be minimized with the help of a diuretic so diuretic causes diuresis increase excretion of sodium and water this minimizes the fluid retention decreases the volume overload increasing the effectiveness decreasing side effects such as edema and helps in improving the safety of the regimen and is used as a combination therapy thus vasodilators such as hydralazine and calcium channel blocker when combined with a beta blocker and a diuretic reduces the side effects improving the safety profile of the drug and improving the efficacy of the antihypertensive drug regimen the third benefit of combination therapy with antihypertensive agents antihypertensive effect can be increased when thiazide diuretics which is a commonly used diuretic is combined with ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers thiazide diuretics is known to have potentiating action it potentiates the action of a second antihypertensive agent thus increasing the efficacy of the antihypertensive drug regimen ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers are very effective drugs for the treatment of congestive heart failure and left ventricular hypertrophy. So, so because of the potentiating action of thiazide diuretics, the efficacy of ACE inhibitors and ARDs is enhanced. Therefore, a combination of thiazide diuretics and ACE inhibitors and ARDs is preferred and is very useful in the management of hypertension. Next, we move on to five antihypertensive combinations that are to be avoided. It is to be noted that when combining antihypertensive drugs, drugs acting through similar mechanisms on the same compensatory pathways should be avoided. For, for example, the combination of clonidine and beta blockers. Both these drugs are sympathetic inhibitors acting at different levels. Clonidine inhibits the central sympathetic discharge by acting on the brain and beta blocker decreases the actions of epinephrine and norepinephrine on adrenergic receptors thus decreasing the sympathetic activity. Thus both these drugs acting together can produce excessive inhibition of the sympathetic system and this can increase the risk of side effects. Next, a combination of angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor and angiotensin receptor blocker. So, both these drugs inhibit the renin angiotensin aldosterone system at different steps. ACE inhibitor decreases the formation of angiotensin 2 and angiotensin receptor blocker inhibits or prevents the action of angiotensin 2 on the receptors thereby decreasing the renin angiotensin aldosterone system it is known that ACE inhibitor causes hyperkalemia as a side effect and when combined with an angiotensin receptor blocker produces excessive reduction of aldosterone and this increases the risk of hyperkalemia and other side effects including acute kidney injury. Therefore, it is advised not to combine an ACE inhibitor with an angiotensin receptor blocker and this helps in reducing the side effects. The next antihypertensive combination that needs to be avoided is a calcium channel blocker with a beta blocker. Calcium channel blocker by inhibiting the calcium current decreases the cardiac contractility thereby decreasing the heart rate. Beta blocker by inhibiting or antagonizing the beta receptors of the heart decreases the cardiac contractility and heart rate. So, thus combining calcium channel blocker with the beta blocker there is excessive cardiac depression and this decreases the heart rate. This can cause bradycardia and AV block as side effects. The next combination that needs to be avoided is a combination of clonidine and methyl dopa. So both these drugs belong to the same class and therefore should be avoided. 
So drugs belonging to the same class should not be combined together. Next, a combination of hydrolazine, calcium channel blocker and upper blocker such as prazosine should be avoided. This is because all of these drugs produce vasodilatation and a similar hemodynamic profile. And this can cause increased likelihood of side effect. Therefore, drugs having similar hemodynamic profile should not be combined together. So, to conclude, when you are using antihypertensive drugs in combination, it should be kept in mind that these drugs should not be belonging to the same class, acting through similar mechanisms or acting on the same compensatory pathways or similar mechanisms because this increases the likelihood of side effect, decreasing the safety profile of the regimen. So, let's see how do you use combination therapy in the management of hypertension. As we can see in this table, hypertension can be classified as stage 1, stage 2 and severe hypertension. Generally, initial combination therapy is preferred in stage 2 and in severe hypertension. In stage 1 hypertension, monotherapy can be used if the patient is low to moderate risk or the patient is elderly. However, in stage 1 hypertension, if the initial blood pressure is greater than 150 mm of mercury or the patient is a high risk patient suffering from diabetes or chronic renal disease which requires a greater reduction in the blood pressure where the target blood pressure lowering effect should be greater than 20 mm of mercury. So in such a case, combination therapy is recommended. So the four major antihypertensive drug classes that are used in combination are a for AC inhibitors and ARBs, B for beta blockers, C for calcium channel blockers and D for thiazide diuretics or thiazide like diuretics. As for the current hypertension guidelines among the four major antihypertensive drug classes, beta blockers are excluded from the list of first choice drugs because of certain drawbacks. They are used only when there is a compelling indication. So, if the patient is a young patient less than 55 years of age, AC inhibitor or ARB is the preferred choice because these are the patients who are more responsive to the AC inhibitors and ARBs. If the patient is old, greater than 55 years of age, then calcium channel blocker or thiazide diuretic is the preferred choice. For greater antihypertensive effect, AC inhibitor or ARB can be combined with a calcium channel blocker or the thiazide diuretic and this increases the efficacy of the antihypertensive drug regimen. Now, if the target blood pressure is not attained with a two drug regimen, then a third drug can be added. So, a combination of AC inhibitor or ARB with a calcium channel blocker and a thiazide diuretic can be used for the management of hypertension. Now, if the hypertension is not responsive to a three drug regimen, a fourth drug can be added and the fourth drug can be an aldosterone antagonist or a beta blocker or an alpha blocker. So, in this way, resistant hypertension can be treated with four drug combination. So, so in this way, antihypertensive drugs can be used in various combinations for the management of hypertension. In this lecture, we have discussed the benefits of combination therapy, the antihypertensive combinations that are to be avoided and how do we use combination therapy in the management of hypertension. So, thank you for watching and please subscribe and like to this channel.